In this video, we're going to talk about atomic term symbols, but specifically only for the hydrogen atom at this point. We'll talk about these in more detail later, but we're going to introduce them because this is a natural point to bring it up after we've talked about spin orbit coupling. So for a term symbol, what we have is we have a superscript on the left, which is going to be the value of 2s plus 1, uh, which this s is going to be for uh, depending on the number of unpaired electrons in the system, which for the hydrogen atom is just going to be one because there's one electron and it's always going to be unpaired. There's going to be a capital letter, which is going to be the orbital angular momentum, L, a uh, capital letter in this case, not usually the lowercase letter, which is usually the way we write it. And then on the right, there's going to be a subscript, which is going to be the value of J for that given electronic state. And these term symbols are used as shorthands to represent individual electronic states and uh, spectroscopists can very quickly know what specific states they're talking about by using these types of term symbols. Okay, so what values can these things take on? Well, if we have just one electron, s can only be one half. And thus 2s plus 1, or the multiplicity or degeneracy, is just going to be able to equal 2, because 2 times 1 half plus 1 is 2. So this whole, this symbol up here for the hydrogen atom is always going to be 2. So just talking about that for this atom for now, we're just going to put a 2 up there, which is also referred to as a doublet. 1 would be a singlet, 3 would be a triplet, 4 would be a quartet, etc. You've probably heard those terms elsewhere, like from uh, studying NMR in organic chemistry. Um, then this L, uh, like I said, is going to be an orbital angular momentum value. So this is going to correspond to things like S, P, D, F, G, etc., all capital letters from the L equals 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 states. Okay, that's simple enough, and it's uh, a lot simpler for us because we're just going to have one electron, so this is going to correspond directly to the atomic orbital that we're in for the hydrogen atom. Again, this, this becomes a lot simpler because we're just talking about the hydrogen atom for the specific cases right now. And then J, there's two possible values for J. When we have uh, one electron like this, we have J equals L yeah, J equals L plus S, and J equals the absolute value of L minus S. Okay, so that's nice. So let's look at some examples and see what this ends up being in practice. So for the 1S orbital, the ground state, again, our multiplicity is going to be 2. We're in L equals 0, or S, so it's a capital S state. And for J, uh, L plus S and absolute value of L minus S are the same thing, they're both one half. So for our, for our ground state, the doublet S one half is our only term symbol. And if we go to N equals 2, the 2S, we're going to see a similar type of thing. The only possible value is doublet S one half. If we go to 2P, there's going to be two possible values. We're going to have doublet and L equals 1 now, so it's a capital P. And L1 plus S 1 half is 3 halves. L minus S is 1 minus 1 half, and that absolute value is still 1 half. So we have a doublet P 1 half. And going up to N equals 3, we're going to have things like the 3S state still going to be boring old double s one half no other no other s orbitals are going to have different term symbols for the hydrogen atom other atoms they will then 3p it's going to be the same as 2p just double it p three halves double it p one half and for 3d what do we have there we have still going to be a doublet because we still have one electron, s is still one, or s is still one half. 
So we have a doublet and L equals two for the D orbital, so we're gonna have D. And J is going to have the values of two plus one half and two minus one half, so five halves. And doublet D, three halves. Again, these are quite simple and for the hydrogen atom because we have we have a very restricted case. There's only one electron and there's and it's going to occupy whichever orbital we pick. So one electron simplifies these cases quite a lot. We'll see some more complicated cases later on. But these are some ideas of how we calc how we determine term symbols for a hydrogen atom. Then within the doublet S one half, there would be two states, M sub J equals plus one half, M sub J equals minus one half. Similar for similarly for two S and three S, there'd be M sub J equals plus and minus one half. So two states within each of those uh, term symbols or or two possible values there. And for the P, where for double P one half, we have plus and minus one half M sub J. For double at P three halves, we have M sub J can equal three halves, one half, minus one half, and minus three halves. Same thing up at the three P level. Then for the three D, again, showing the concept of M sub J, it has values of three halves, one half, minus one half, minus three halves. And for J equals five halves, we can have M sub J equals five halves, three halves, one half, minus one half, minus three halves, and minus five halves, six possible values there. So you see what we might expect now, given our uh, general chemical intuition, we have two possible values, um, two possible electrons we could fit in a 1s orbital, two possible electrons we could fit in a 1s orbital, one with m sub j one half, one with m sub j minus one half. Six total in the in the p shell, six total in the p shell, ten, sh ten total in the d shell. So indeed, each of the, each uh, different possibility for where this electron could go has a distinct set of quantum numbers. And when we do this type of spin orbit coupling, we have this type of uh, system to describe all of those different quantum numbers which are possible. This, this would be slightly different than what is the case when we don't have spin orbit coupling and we would have um, just things like um, m sub s equals in plus or minus one half within each spatial orbital. But uh, spin orbit coupling and these values of j give us a slightly different uh, situation that we have here. So we're going to look at how this affects uh, the transitions which are possible and which occur in the hydrogen uh, atom spectrum, the line spectra that we looked at a uh, very, very long time ago for that were eventually determined the uh, Rydberg formula for those transitions.